Hey guys, and welcome to the video. And this another episode of Hacking Modding News and Info. This is a weekly segment that I do where I go over and cover and highlight some of the information regarding the hacking, modding, homebrew, jailbreak, and emulation scenes that I think viewers of this channel would either find helpful, informative, useful, or just entertaining. There is a strong focus here on consoles and handhelds, but we do cover stuff regarding PCs and phones and other platforms as well from time to time. And pretty much everything I cover is strictly oriented towards the end user. And with that, let's go ahead and take a look at what's gone down over the past week or so. And let's start off this week's episode by just summarizing the biggest news of the week, hands down, and that is that some of the leaders of Team Executor were arrested. Three of its leaders, two of them are already here detained in the US. The third one, the last time I checked, was waiting to be extradited over. Each one is gonna be hit with 11 felony counts. In the video, I go over exactly what went down in more detail. I also speculate as to what can happen going forward with the remaining members of Team Executor and the SXOS firmware. I also talk about another bit of news that came out last week, and that is that Nintendo wins its lawsuit against Uberchips.com. Uberchips.com decided to settle. They have to pay Nintendo $2 million. And so I cover a little bit of information about that in this video you're seeing here, as well as how Nintendo can get involved in this situation that Team Executor is facing after it's all over. So if you haven't checked it out, maybe give it a quick look. Again, the link will be down in the description. All right, so since we're talking about Nintendo already, kind of let's stick with Nintendo stuff before we move on to the Sony stuff and everything else, starting off with the Switch scene, because of course, a lot is happening. On October 1st, we already knew HBG Shop was going down. That was from a previous announcement made by the developers of it a week before, and sure enough, October 1st came and it was gone. There's some alternatives out there, but the main one hands down was Jack in the Shop, or JITS as it's referred to. Well, today, October 5th, Jack himself stated that Jack in the Shop is now gone as well. Now, I want to stress that it seems like this happened not because of what happened with Team Executor, but apparently because when HBG Shop went down on October 1st, a lot of people migrated over. That migration, what it did was it just flooded their system and the way they were doing things. It even states here that they received a huge flood of users that put the shop to the test. And unfortunately, the shop was not able to cope with it. It even states that it's not because of their server, not because the server sucks, but because the Google exploit they were using was no longer enough. Then they used another exploit that wasn't enough either. So they said here that they are seeing if in the future the shop will return, if it continues, how they're going to bring that content to the users. But right now it's finished and they even state here not to place any hope that the shop will ever return. So the Switch piracy scene has definitely taken some hard hits over the past four or five days. HBG shop shutting down, then the team executor leaders being arrested, and now JITS is gone as well. And continuing with the Switch scene, a few homebrews have updated. So let's go over those really quick. I've already talked about them a bunch of times in previous uh, videos. So first, Edison SE has updated. This is a fork of the popular Edison homebrew. This one has a bunch of added features. If you haven't checked it out, make sure when you come over to the GitHub that you glance over all of them because it's quite a few. And if you head over to the releases, you'll find out that over the past week, there's actually been three updates. So you can check out what's been done in each one of these and then grab the latest NRO file from here. And of course, it installs like any other homebrew. Next up is homebrew details. 
and this homebrew allows you to see various details and information about the other homebrews you have installed, more specifically all of the NRO files you have installed. You can check out some of the features here. There's also some screenshots and it looks really nice. You get to see a lot of details that you normally wouldn't see when using like the homebrew menu and whatnot. You can even update this homebrew straight from the app itself. Now, when you head on over to the uh, latest releases, once you check out what's been done in this latest update, you'll see that there are several files you can download. So let's go ahead and clear this up real quick. First, this zip file, the NRO zip, it's just the NRO that's been zipped up. And then the forwarder NSP zip file, it's just the forwarder NSP that was put into a zip. So the forwarder really isn't necessary, but I'll explain it here in a second. Make sure that when you're ready to use this or update it, you install the homebrew detail NRO, just like you would any other homebrew. Now, if you want to use the forwarder, once you've installed the homebrew and you've used it at least once, you can install install the NSP file like any other NSP file. And what this will do is that it creates a shortcut on your home screen. So that way, when you select the shortcut, it will take you straight to the homebrew details homebrew without you having first to go to HB menu and then launch it from there. So it's basically just a shortcut for the homebrew. But again, it's not necessary to use that forwarder unless you want to. And we will round out the switch stuff with an update to mission control. This one is a very useful homebrew because it allows you to use third party controllers via Bluetooth on your modded switch. And this update is an important one because it adds even more controllers to the mix. So you can now take a look here at the GitHub page to see all of the controllers that are supported. And it's possible that more may be supported that are not on this list yet. You also have installation instructions here and requirements. Now, one important thing that you need to note is that with this latest update, and I do recommend for those of you who are already using this to make sure that you update, you need to also have atmosphere atmosphere 14.2 or higher installed in order for this to work. So that is key. There's also some instructions here for people who are using 0, 0.1.0 version of this homebrew. There is uh, one or two things you need to do. So make sure that you read this if you are upgrading from that version. And then all you need to do is come down here, grab the contents that are inside of the zip file, copy and paste them to the root of your SD card, and then take the .nro file, put that into the switch folder that's on the root of your SD card, and you'll be all set. Oh, and real quick, there's also one more thing that's been updated for the Switch, but it's also been updated for the Vita, and that is OpenBore. This is kind of like an emulator type deal that plays a lot of games from the 8-bit and 16-bit era. The catch here is that pretty much all of these games, and there are hundreds upon hundreds, if not thousands of games that have all been modded in some way, shape, or form, whether it's some type of character mods, or they've added more characters, more levels, or maybe it's just a whole new game that's been done from the ground up using another game's engine. There's a lot of content here. Most of it surrounds beat em up type games, but there's also many other games from different genres. I've been wanting to do like a mini series about open bore and hopefully I can get to do it before the year is over. Anyway, this latest update is version 1.2 for the Vita and version 1.1 for the Switch. There's a lot of information here in the releases page. When you come down to the assets, you will find the VPK file for Vita and the NRO for Switch. And the last thing we'll be covering for the Vita is an update to Gpatch. This is a plugin that allows you to play some PSP games in their native resolution on your modded Vita. When this first started off, it was around 50 games or so that were compatible. Now it's up to around 180 or more with these latest updates. 
you must have adrenaline already installed and it needs to be the latest adrenaline in order for this to work. There's a compatibility list spreadsheet located right here. The link is right there. And then you can grab the latest release, of course, from the release page. You can see the G patch PRX file is right there. All right, let's head on over to the PS4 scene real quick. Just a couple of things we'll be covering here. First, an update to the PS4 package tool. This is something for your PC. This has been out for a little while, but this is a good update. So I recommend that if you already have this installed to go ahead and update to this latest version. Among the things that were done here, they added a package viewer to view and extract PKG content. They added new package info. They fixed a couple of key things. They changed the UI around a little bit. The EXE file is there. Now, for those who don't know what this is, this is not a way for you to get free games. This is just a, a library type manager deal. So it manages all of your package files. You can get various details and information from them and all kinds of other good stuff, but you can't just download free games using it. And you can even install games from your PC straight into your PS4 with this, but you do need to have the package installer running in your PS4 in order to take advantage of that. And the last thing we'll be covering for the PS4 is PS4 Explorer. This is now version 1.24. This update allows you now to see the temperatures of the APU in the upper right hand corner. It is displayed in Celsius, but if you want to change it to Fahrenheit, there is a way to do that here at Logic Sunrise where the update's been posted. It tells you how to do it right there. Anyway, there's been some other minor fixes here and there. This is just a regular file explorer file manager. It installs like any other package file and the download link is located here at the bottom. And I'm going to wrap things up this week with a couple of miscellaneous mentions. First, an update to DS4 Windows. I've talked about this before in the past. This is a program that allows you to seamlessly connect a PS4 DualShock controller to your PC, either wired or wirelessly. If you have Bluetooth, I use this pretty much religiously with RetroArch whenever I'm playing old school ROMs on my PC and with MAME and things like that and it absolutely works great. This latest update has quite a few improvements as you can see and additions and overall enhancements. Just make sure you grab the file that best suits your needs from there. And then lastly, this is kind of funny. So over in one of the Reddit forums, and I can't post which one it is because of the sensitivity behind it. I don't want to get YouTube police all over me again. Anyway, a guy posted this. He received almost 30 letters from Comcast a few years ago because he downloaded a discography from Pirate Bay and all of these letters that he got back in 2016 were from Comcast telling him, well, you can't do that. You know, piracy is bad and you run the risk of losing your internet service, you know, being cut off and whatever. And he states that he never was. He just kept getting all of the letters and nothing ever happened. Now, I don't know if he put all the letters away and he just recently came across them again it doesn't really say so i don't know the story behind it but either way it's crazy that they would send him all of these letters a waste of paper a waste of postage a waste of resources and then not do absolutely anything so the funny thing is is that earlier this year cox communications was hit with a one billion dollar verdict because of copyright infringement from a federal jury in part the reason is because cox communications like comcast didn't do absolutely anything when people were committing piracy and of course downloading things illegally and whatnot they never cut them off they did the same thing comcast did which was absolutely nothing and they got hit with a one billion dollar verdict now i know these letters are from a few years ago but it's interesting to see if comcast because of what happened to cox communications if they continue to do this or if they actually cut people off if any of you 
have Comcast and you've been hit with a couple of warnings and then have been cut off, let us know because I'm curious to find out. And that is going to do it for this week's episode, guys. You know I appreciate you watching. And if you found anything here informative, useful, helpful, or maybe just entertaining, or you just want to throw some love or appreciation towards the channel, as always, you know, the best way to do any of those things is just to hit that like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already. Much love going out to everyone out there. Be careful, be safe, but have fun, and we will see you on the next one.